Hello and welcome to Rando Tech Info. So today we're talking about solar power banks. Not so much this specific power bank, although I will give you the details about this particular product here in a second, but just power banks in general, solar power banks, and whether or not they're actually a practical or a viable option to use. There are a lot of different ones out there. This particular one is called the Bee Charming TN4. It is a 26,800 milliamp hour battery. So to give you an idea, if your phone has about a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty standard today um, for, for most mobile devices, then this should give you over six charges, six full phone chargers. So it is a big battery. I also opted to get the one with the four panels. A lot of them just have one. I got the one with four because four panels means it should be able to charge four times as fast, right? Um, it was $42 on the Amazon, so reasonably priced. It was about in the price range of other solar power banks of this size. It also had about the same ratings as other solar power banks of this size. So I feel like this is a pretty good representation of the market in general and whether or not these things actually really work. So what I'm going to do now is kind of walk you through my experience with this, show you how I charged it, how I tracked this charge, uh, how well it um, charges your device once it's charged, all that fun stuff. So you can kind of make a decision on your own as far as whether or not this is something you want to invest in. Okay, so just some real quick specs about this particular charger. Um, it's got a five volt, two amp input. It's got a five volt, two amp output, which is pretty standard fare actually. Um, if you were gonna charge this thing with like a USB-C cable, and it does have a USB-C port, not all power banks do. I strongly recommend you get a power bank with a USB-C port, particularly larger ones, otherwise they will take much longer to charge. This one took, after I powered it down, the first time I charged it, I did it with the solar. Then I ran it down, charged it up again. You can expect it to take two or three days to charge it fully with a um, USB-C cable. That sounds like a long time, but once again, this is almost a 27,000 milliamp hour battery. It's pretty similar to other large power banks that I've had in the past, so nothing extraordinary there. Pretty standard. As far as charging your device, um, I was able to get my OnePlus uh, 7T, which has around a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, a little smaller than that actually. It took it from 36% to 90% in a little under an hour and a half. So not warp charge speeds, certainly, but once again, not bad, okay? It does the job. You're not gonna see anything really slow there, nothing really fast. It's pretty much what you would expect from a normal power bank. One other thing, uh, kind of cool, especially for you people who are planning on using this outdoors or in an emergency situation, it does have a, uh, it does have a flashlight which uh, hmm. oh huh. there we go See, works anyway um, so let's talk about what makes this special and what you came to watch which is about the solar charging so something we have to talk about real quick before we start talking about uh, how this phone charged and everything else is how this device measures charge so if you look right here oh man the lights went. so if you look right here you will see that it measures charge by these lights and how much they light up. This is not uh, unique. There are a lot of uh, devices and power banks that show their charge in the same way, but because it does not have a numeric readout, it is hard to know exactly how much this charged phone, how much this phone charged over specific periods of time. I'm going to uh, let you know my best guesses on that. It'll be close enough to give you an idea of how effective the solar charging was, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that uh, not everything was quite as precise as I would have liked it to be. So as you can see, there's five lights on here, but the first light, the one closest to the button, isn't actually really a charge light. It's just an indicator and it flashes when the phone is charging. So really that one doesn't count. The four after that, farthest away from the black button are the ones that actually matter as far as reading the charge. When I first took this out of the box, it had one light of charge. So I took this phone and it's roughly 25% charge and I put it right here underneath this window. I opened up its panels and uh, I let it sit here. Now the sun comes up over that hill every morning and then gets about halfway over the house in the afternoon. 
so it was getting a semi-direct sunlight like in here at least um for several hours in the morning it was coming through the window um also for full disclosure i did this for seven days six of those seven days were really really overcast so um the thing really had to work to try to get a charge during that time. So unfortunately, um, after seven days of charging it in this fashion, uh, we got no charge, at least none that was measurable by the device. I'm sure it got some type of charge, but no more lights lit up. At the end of seven days, there was still only one light lighting up out of the four. So my next big plan was to bring the power bank outside and let it charge actually in the outdoors without the window separating it from it and the sunlight. So what I did was uh, I laid it out on this table right here. As you can see. And then once again, as you can see, same view as inside, the sun would come up over the hill here and it would get some really nice direct sunlight for that time. A um, couple quick things I want to note uh, here. This thing is supposed to be water resistant. It does not have an IP rating. So I don't know that I would leave it outside in the pouring rain. You definitely don't want to submerge it. But I do think, uh, well, it says, the product says there is some water resistance there. So if it got some sprinkles on it in the rain, like if you're using it outside, I don't think that would really hurt it. So something else you need to know is that the six days I charged this thing outside were basically all sunny. I think one of the days it was a little bit overcast, but most of the time it was really sunny, kind of the opposite of the way it was when I tried to charge the thing indoors. Furthermore, to give this thing the optimal charging conditions, I chased the sun. So midday, once the sun went over my house, I moved the power bank to the front of my house so we could keep getting in the sunlight. So no excuses. This thing had every opportunity to charge for the next six days. And I'm happy to say it did. At the end of the sixth day, when I checked the lights, all of them were lit up. All four lights were lit up. It did achieve a full charge. I don't know exactly when on that sixth day it did. When I moved the phone midday out to my car, it was still not fully charged at that time. So sometime between five and a half and six days in direct sunlight, most of the time in direct sunlight, the thing did get fully charged. So as far as trying to figure out how fast this thing was charging, and like I said before, the, the way the thing measures its charge is not exactly precise, but let's pretend that it took roughly six days to charge 75% then that means this thing could charge fully in about eight days. So considering it can charge your phone over six times, about a day and a few hours, a day and a quarter, less than a day and a half, according to the math, of charge on this thing should be able to charge your 4,000 milliamp hour phone or whatever other device you have fully. I feel like that makes solar power banks definitely a viable option, especially when you consider they're not that much more expensive than regular power banks. And when you compare them to similar sized power banks, this is a 30,000 milliamp hour power bank, so a little bit bigger than this one. But when you fold this up and put it next to the non solar powered power bank, I mean, it's really not that much bigger. Neither one of these are going to fit in your pocket. Like that's not an option. So once that's no longer on the table, I don't feel like a little extra size or heft is that big a deal. So really the panels give it some nice extra functionality for not a lot of extra cost. And in my view, not a ton of extra bulk. So those are my thoughts about solar powered power banks. I'm interested to know what your thoughts are. Please put those down in the comments, or if you already have a solar powered power bank, please put those thoughts down in the comments so other people can learn from them so they can see you know, what other people's experiences are and see if this is something that they want to invest in. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.